it is fall y'all and i'm gonna teach you how to make a beautiful boho fall wreath for your door this it is so beautiful it's like a pumpkin it's a boho themed pumpkin <laughs> all of the materials are going to be listed below this video and if you don't have the stores that i mentioned where i found each item i will try and find something similar on amazon so that way you can order it and recreate it as well so if you would like to see how to recreate a fall wreath for your beautiful door please keep watching All right, so the first step I'm going to be teaching you is how to use the blade when cutting the mesh. It actually worked really well. As you can see, it worked really smooth. However, there's a dilemma in this video that I'm gonna share. But for now, if this is all you had, I think it would be awesome. It, it does thread out, but the cut is pretty easy. If you are going to use the cutter I guess you can call it then you're going to want to make 10 inch squares a 10 by 10 but like I said I had a dilemma and when you use this tool it tends to get loose the mesh gets loose so I will show you a different way of doing this but I also wanted to share in case this is all you had As you can see, it's not that straight and it's starting to come apart. But like I said, if this is all you have, then you gotta work with what you got. So this cuts really well, but as you can see, it has like flakes and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I actually ran out I was only able to get 20 10 inch squares and I need 30. So I'm gonna run out to Michael's and get another one. So you do definitely need to, if you wanna do it this way. And I'm gonna see about the wood burners because they're fraying. And like I said, if you want to keep it for yourself and you don't have a wood burner or have the money to invest in that and you have like something like this or scissors, I say, I think it'll still work the wood burner which i think it will be especially if you want to sell these would be more ideal when it comes to keeping it from fraying because like right now it could definitely come apart like right here you see but it's just going in my front door i'm not gonna sell them but lessons learned when it comes to the wood burner you have to make sure your area can withhold the heat so i'm gonna run to the store real quick we'll get another burlap and then We'll continue one hour later we have a dilemma and we're gonna learn from our mistakes but i did buy a wood burning tool i went to go to the store and i put it on my instagram story about having this dilemma so we got this right cool looks good yeah the problem is it doesn't match this so you see the color difference I mean, with everything in life, it's always about a challenge, right? Just see where life takes us. I'm going to cut 30 from this since it's longer because the other ones are frailing and it is not a good job. It will, it will look horrible. I'm going to plug in my the wood burner. I bought this from Michaels. It was like $16. But if you don't have Michaels, I'll link it down below. And then... One thing we're gonna add that I didn't have time obviously to order Amazon because I want to record this clear glass sheet. I got 11 by 14 since I'm going to be cutting 10 inch squares. So let's try this and see if it works. A few moments later. Okay, we're back and I did it. So see, it's not fraying. You do have to wear a mask though. But I'm talking to you so I won't wear one. But there's a lot of smoke with it, but it's very very easy so let me show you the setup and then we'll continue because now we need we have two of these we need 28 more so the wood burners right here then i have the glass on top of the mat 
because this will bleed through, but we still need to measure. So this is what I do when it comes to measuring it. All right, so we are back at step one. So we're going to make 10 by 10 squares. However, this is a longer mesh. So I ended up cutting at the 10 inch mark and then I cut that piece in half. And again, it made two 10 inch squares. So that's the goal. You want 10 inch squares, 10 by 10 inch squares when it comes to the mesh for this particular project. As you can see, the wood burner really does cut well. One thing I will share, be careful your fingers. And also I used the line in the mesh and then I burned it at that particular line and it made it a lot easier to ensure it was straight. I actually like this. I do recommend wearing a mask, like I said before, to make sure because there is a lot of smoke that comes from this tool. Now that we have 30 of our 10 inch squares, we're going to make the pumpkin petals. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold diagonally and then you're going to scrunch the corner in and then you're going to scrunch and scrunch and scrunch all the way up until you get to the other corner. I know I have no good words for this, but if you just follow along in the video, you can see me do it. Okay, so just make sure that you're able to use both your fingers and you're going to scrunch them at the end because you're going to want to make them look just like a petal, just like this. Next, you're going to take the pumpkin frame and you're going to go about maybe like two or three inches above the end and use your zip tie to pull it tight you don't have to make sure it's aligned just make sure that the pedals are decent before pulling tight but you can adjust the pedals if they're too low or too high so don't worry about that part just pull the zip tie tight and then what you're going to do is just kind of curve it see how it looks and then you're going to go across we are not doing the end we're going to save that for last As you can see, we're about two to three inches above the bottom. So we're gonna go all the way across, making all of our pumpkin petals for the rest of the row. And then we're gonna continue doing it over and over again until we fill up the frame. You should have six at the bottom outside of the two ends and what we're going to do is we're going to work on the second row right now. The second row is done and you can adjust it in the back like I said if you want and then what we're going to do now is going to the third row now you may notice some loose strings you can mod podge that or just cut them off like how I did you could probably even burn them off um I it was just me so I just kept it so now onto the third row now on to the third row one thing I want to stress, you're not going to do the two middle poles. Those are going to hold the green petals, so leave those empty. Now that the third row is done, remember those two poles in the middle are going to be for our leaves. So we're going to add three to the end of the pumpkin, which is where I'm pointing to, one, two, three. And you're going to add another three, and it should total out to 30 total petals. 
Now let's add the green petals to the front. So again, you can push the other ones all the way to the top so they can cover, but leave those two middle because we're gonna fill them in now. All right, we're gonna take our wood burner and just burn off the excess on the end. And then we are going to make four 10 by 10 inch squares for the petals. Like I said before, if you just follow one of the lines going down as you're using the wood burner tool it will really help you stay in a straight line so even if you lose your line as you're measuring it does won't matter because it will be straight because that line in the mesh is straight Next, we are going to make the green petal. So you're going to fold both corners in and then you are going to scrunch just like how we did for the beige pumpkin petals. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pinch it right there. It'll look like a bow tie and then you're gonna fold them both in because that is going to act like two petals in one. Then you're going to take your zip ties and you're going to attach it right at the top. So you should have one on the corner of the stem one in the middle, two in the middle, and then one in the end. Here is a closer look of me putting together the petals again. You're gonna bring two corners into the middle, and then you are going to scrunch, 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 until you're able to pinch in the middle and then you're going to twist both of the petals together and then lock them in to the pumpkin frame. Remember, you can pull tight on these zip ties because you can adjust where the petal is sitting. So if it's not perfect as you're setting up, that's okay. As long as you pull tight, you'll be able to adjust it later. Okay, so I added some flowers that I'm going to add to the, to the brim. I gathered them together and zip tied them. And now I'm gonna zip tie them to the stem. So I'm just gonna pull so it doesn't move. And I'm gonna add another zip tie. And then we'll just add one more. Make sure those are secure. Just spread it out just a little. And then I'm gonna show you how I did this one. And so we could put the other one, which is this set right here, on the other side. One thing I want to stress is that you don't need to zip tie three of them on there. In fact, as I was putting the pumpkin together, the third zip tie on the stem fell off. So two will do, um, but if you just want extra reassurance, you can use three in total when it comes to these flowers. Now you're gonna take your pipe cleaner, you're going to fold it in half, and then you're gonna bring each stem towards the middle, like how I'm doing in the video, um, fold it in half again, 
and then when you let it loose it should look like a W so what you're going to do is you're going to take that middle part put it through the loop and then kind of twist it into place because the middle part of that is going to be the hook that you hang on your door so you want to make sure you put that on because we are going to cover the stem in the next step The next step we're going to take a 10 by 10 inch green mesh and we're going to fold it in half hot dog style make sure the ends are together and then you're going to put a lot of hot glue i use the hot temperature hot glue and you're going to stick that mesh folded on top of the stems now be mindful your fingers are going to burn if you have some covers to do it because you're going to want to push down the mesh so that way the glue constantly is adhering adhering to both of the sides so just keep gluing you as much glue if you want to go glue heavy by all means do you boo boo but just make sure that it stays in place maybe you could even use clamps so that way um it doesn't come apart you know as it's on your door The next step is to make a bowl for the wreath. Now, I didn't show this part because I really struggle with bows and it just it doesn't serve me to show you something I'm not good at. But I will leave a link of a video or videos that can show you how to make a bow. But that's exactly what I'm doing. Or you can just buy one. After you finish duck tailing, which is what I just did at the end to make it real nice, you're going to put it in the center on top of the stem. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take a pipe cleaner and you're going to put it through the frame. Then you're going to wrap it around the bow and put it through the middle and then back down into the frame so that way you can connect the Ziploc to the bow and the frame. Hopefully this makes sense. If not, rewatch this part until you understand. <laughs> the next part is to just readjust the bow, make it look pretty, and you are done. It's been a long time coming. I actually bought the materials a long time ago and I never stepped into this. So doing tutorials again is such a different experience. <laughs> I haven't done tutorials in a very long time. So if you found this tutorial extremely helpful, please give it a big thumbs up, share it with a friend, let them be creative. I'm trying to be more creative here on my channel. More teachings, tutorials, vlogging, all that good stuff on how to be creative with everything that I do in my life and take you along the journey with me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are new and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Do you know I've never had a pumpkin spice latte before? I think I'm going to do that for the next video. Yeah, I'm going to try my own recipes before I spend money in Starbucks and lose my mind <laughs> if I don't like it. So stay tuned.